what kind of life must you have to have a relationship with God now and forever? It's called blank life. Eternal? Yes, Eternal. you got it. Eternal. So, can you already pick? Yeah. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He came alive. We're blended, so we have our youngest daughter. We have her together. I have Carter, Becky, and Junior, and then she has Rylan, which is the oldest, and then we kind of just form together. <laughs> I grew up in the churches, but I had not experienced it as an adult. I'd never been to church, ever. I didn't grow up in that lifestyle. I didn't have any conversations about God, church, Jesus, nothing. We heard about it from the Bowman newsletter. And I just so happened to catch that one and I was like, oh yes. Didn't we sign them up after like there was that whole like Satan worship, worship thing? Yeah. That we kind of didn't, I don't think, really agreed with. On Thursday, people in Lebanon noticed this flyer circulating on social media. It's for an after-school Satan club. Many Lebanon parents were outraged by the flyer, but the superintendent says, quote, either the district facilities are to be made available to all groups or to no groups. This is because legally public schools cannot deny facilities to a religious group when the same facilities are available to other groups. The first things that came to my mind was, what are my kids going to hear at school when they hear the Satan Club is going around? And it was a determining factor putting them in the Good News Club. I wanted to be on the right side. Yeah. Three and one and one in three. meet new friends, learn about God and Jesus. We're learning new verses. They were very interested in what they were hearing. They would come home and share it with us and their siblings and they started praying and it was really cool to witness. And they even would even ask to like read a Bible verse before bed. I asked for a Bible, because I didn't have one. Soon as I got it, I started to read it. I was so happy that it was gifted to them. I mean, he pulled that Bible out and he read it by himself. I read a verse to my mom. He was reading the story about how the sea parted. There was also one that he was very excited about walking on water. I just find it so neat how they share. It doesn't end when they walk out of Good News Club. Yeah. They continue sharing, and I, I love it. It's a good thing that they want to learn, and they have the opportunity to learn that I never had. Carter got really sick. He had a basic ear infection. He was asymptomatic, which then caused a massive infection called mastoiditis. So it was infection around the bone on the back side of his ear. And it was growing rapidly, starting to form an assist on the, the liner of his brain, which then required emergency surgery and then a lot of problems after that on his recovery side. We ended up being in the hospital for, I think it was eight days, I believe. He just kept getting sicker and no doctors had answers for what was going on. It was terrifying. And then there's four other kids at home. <laughs> it's still hard to talk about. That was a defining moment for us. Look to God when there are no answers. And Carter being so sick in the hospital was even, he wanted to pray and he wanted to ask God to heal him. I think that we wouldn't have gotten through that without believing in God and without prayer and without a hope of we're going to go home and get to go to church and praise him. The doctor is very surprised there's no hearing loss or any permanent lasting damage. So he healed really well, really well. Yeah. I think we came home on a Tuesday and we were in church by Sunday. We went and the kids 
had a blast in the kids section. When it was over, they prayed over Carter, which was really nice for healing. I think having that prayer at the end just made me feel such a peace and a calm that it was very comforting.